Well, look who's back, Mr. Mole. Our students must be getting really good at these stoichiometry problems. Do you think they're ready to move on? I think so, too. Today, we're going to expand on your knowledge of stoichiometry by solving mass-mass problems and percent yield problems. In this lesson, you will solve mass-mass stoichiometry problems, define actual yield, theoretical yield, and percent yield, and solve percent yield problems. Time to put on your math hats, get out your calculators, and prepare for some more chemistry math fun. If you follow the method and let the units guide you, I think you will find that these problems are very similar to the ones you've already mastered. They just involve another step or two, that's all. So, let's try one, shall we? When nitrogen and hydrogen react, they form ammonia gas, NH3. If 56.0 grams of nitrogen are used up in the reaction, how many grams of ammonia will be produced? I want you to put your pencils down and just watch carefully as we work through this one together. Then, I will give you a chance to try some on your own. Hey, Mr. Mole, I said put your pencils down. Thank you. Now we can proceed. Of course, our first step is to write a balanced chemical equation. We have nitrogen and hydrogen, which we know are both diatomic gases at room temperature reacting together to produce ammonia. We were told in the problem that ammonia is a gas. In order to balance this, we will put a 2 in front of ammonia and a 3 in front of hydrogen. Now, let's write our problem in the question mark format. How many grams of NH3 equal 56.0 grams of N2? Notice that we are given information about N2 and we want information about NH3. You learned in the last program that this means we are going to need to make the switch from one substance in our equation to another substance by using the mole ratio. But the first thing we will do is convert our grams of N2 to moles using the molar mass. Otherwise, we can't use the mole ratio to make the switch. Since the molar mass of N2 is 28.0 grams per mole, we convert from grams of N2 to moles of N2 by putting 28.0 grams of N2 on the bottom and one mole of N2 on the top of the conversion factor. The grams of N2 cancel. Now that we have moles of N2, we are ready to use the mole ratio from the balanced equation to make the switch from moles of N2 to moles of NH3. There is no coefficient in front of N2. That means we have one mole of N2 for every two moles of NH3. So that the correct units cancel, we put one mole of N2 on the bottom and two moles of NH3 on the top of the mole ratio. The moles of N2 cancel, leaving us with moles of NH3. We've made the switch. This is where we stopped with our problems in the last program. But look at our question mark. This equation didn't ask for moles of ammonia, it asked for grams of ammonia. But that's not really a problem, is it? We know how to convert from moles of NH3 to grams of NH3 by simply using the molar mass as a conversion factor. The molar mass of nitrogen is 14.0 grams per mole and the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.0 grams per mole. Don't forget that we have three hydrogens in our formula. That means that the molar mass of NH3 is 17.0 grams per mole. So, we put one mole of NH3 on the bottom of our conversion factor 
and 17.0 grams of NH3 on the top of the conversion factor. Our moles of NH3 cancel. We are left with grams of NH3, which is exactly what we're looking for. We multiply 56.0 times 2 times 17.0 and then we divide by 28.0 to get 68.0 grams of ammonia. You can see that this is just a slight variation on what we did in our last program. Again, Mr. Mole and I stress to you that you should not try to memorize how to solve these problems. You just want to go one step at a time using conversion factors until you have solved each problem. Now, I know what you're thinking. Ah, he's a teacher. Of course he makes it look easy. Believe me, you can do this too. Here's one for you to try. Sodium metal reacts with oxygen gas to produce solid sodium oxide. How many grams of sodium must react to produce 42.0 grams of sodium oxide? Local teachers, please pause the tape while your students solve this problem. How many grams of Na equal 42.0 grams Na2O? Now, I let the units guide me through the problem. I use the periodic table and the formula to figure out that the molar mass of sodium oxide is 62.0 grams per mole. I put 62.0 grams sodium oxide on the bottom and one mole sodium oxide on the top. The grams of sodium oxide cancel. Now that I have moles, I can use the mole ratio from my balanced chemical equation to make the switch. I put two moles of Na2O on the bottom, which will cancel, and four moles of Na on the top. Since the problem asked for grams, I know I'm not quite finished yet. The molar mass of sodium is 23.0 grams per mole. In order for the units to cancel, I need to put one mole of sodium on the bottom, which means I need to put 23.0 grams of sodium on the top. All that is left to do is to multiply 42.0 times 4 times 23.0 divided by 62.0 divided by 2. This gives me 31.2 grams of sodium. Very good. Let's try one more and then we will expand our knowledge a little more. When 12.0 grams of hydrogen reacts with oxygen, how many grams of water are produced? Local teachers, please pause the tape while your students solve this problem. You should be starting to get the hang of this. Notice I said starting to. You'll practice a lot more before you are expected to solve problems like a pro. Now, let's think for a minute about how these problems relate to a lab setting. After all, Chemistry is all about experiments. When chemists are working in the real world, they can use stoichiometry problems to predict how much product will be formed from a certain reaction. However, our experience tells us that any experiment will have a certain amount of experimental error. Because of this, chemists will compare actual yield with theoretical yield to come up with a percent yield. And the higher this number is, the better. What's that? Oh, you're right, Mr. Mole. 
I did just throw a lot of terms out there, didn't I? I guess our students better put these into their notes. In a given chemical reaction, the actual yield is determined through experimentation. The actual yield is the amount of product that is actually produced when the reaction is carried out in a lab setting. The theoretical yield is determined by working a stoichiometry problem. The theoretical yield is the amount of product that is expected to be produced based on the balanced equation and the amount of reactants. The percent yield is found by dividing the actual yield by the theoretical yield and then multiplying by 100%. A high percent yield means that the procedure was performed with a relatively low amount of experimental error. Hmm, I wonder how we've been doing with our labs. Let's look back at one of the labs from the last unit and make a percent yield calculation. The students are using the digital balance to find the mass of a sample of sodium bicarbonate. The students tear the balance with the massing cup before adding the sample. They find the mass of sodium bicarbonate to be 0.23 grams. Now the students use a funnel to put the sodium bicarbonate into a pipette. The students also have a pipette that contains hydrochloric acid. The students put both pipettes into a beaker and find the mass to be 5.98 grams. This is the mass before the reaction takes place. The students add the hydrochloric acid to the sodium bicarbonate and observe the reaction that takes place. They continue to add hydrochloric acid until there are no more bubbles. Now that the reaction is complete, the students put both pipettes back in the same beaker and mass again. The mass after the reaction is complete is 5.85 grams. Our task is going to be to calculate the percent yield of carbon dioxide from this experiment performed by my students. This means that we need two pieces of information the actual yield and the theoretical yield. The first thing we need to do is take a look at the balanced equation. Sodium bicarbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce sodium chloride, carbon dioxide, and water. We figured out before that the substance bubbling away in the lab is carbon dioxide. We can look at our data to figure out the actual yield of carbon dioxide. The mass before the reaction was 5.98 grams. And the mass after the reaction was 5.85 grams. We can subtract to find the amount of carbon dioxide that bubbled away. This amount is 0 0.13 grams. This is the actual yield.